Good morning. Our Liturgy of Holy Eucharist for this eighth Sunday after Pentecost begins on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desire is known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah, and Jacob said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, this is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other one also, in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading the appointed verses of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord, our God. His judgment prevails in all the world. He has also been mindful of his covenant the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statue for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn it? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. 
Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Another parable Jesus put before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net which was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? And they answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Amen. In today's gospel, we hear parable after parable just tripping one over the next about the kingdom of God. There are five of them altogether in less space than it took Jesus to explain one in last week's gospel. Can you hear his almost frantic pace, trying to get it all in, in the limited amount of time available? I suspect he must have been out of breath by the time he finished. Whew, made it. What a sigh there would have been. And that sense of sigh, that sense of breath, that's what St. Paul is talking about in the passage from Romans that we heard this morning. The Hebrew word for spirit is ruach, literally breath, ruach. And Paul says that it is with us throughout our life's journey. The spirit, the ruach, the breath is eternal. It has been part of God from before the first glimmer of creation. It's the Ruach that hovers over the waters of chaos before creation in Genesis 1. It's that same Ruach, that same spirit and breath that God breathes into humanity to give it life. It's the Ruach which in the Holy of Holies 
It comes down and settles on the Ark of the Covenant to establish God's presence there. It's the Ruach that descends on Jesus at his baptism. And it's the Ruach that Jesus himself breathes onto his disciples when he comes to them after the resurrection. When Paul tells us about this spirit, this breath, this Ruach, and its deep sighing, it's that same breath, that God who breathed creation into life, that God who came down to stay among the people, that God whom Jesus was as he came to his disciples. And it's that same spirit, that same presence, that same breath that Jesus promises will carry and energize his disciples as they begin the journey on which he sends them as he ascends to heaven. And in that, in that, Paul says, in that spirit, God is working with those who love him, working for good. The work of the spirit, the ruach, the breath, is to create good. In other words, with its sighing and with its interceding, as it is described throughout Holy Scripture, in whatever may be going on in the world, and even in those things that may leave us speechless and be completely incomprehensible because they're simply bigger than we are, even in those things, the Spirit, the breath of God is alive and active and moving deeply in and out as breathing is in and out rhythmically and always there and one after another working for good breathing with us in that same breath and experiencing the same emotions that we experience sharing the ups and downs of life with us at a level beyond our own words thinking about god in this way as the spirit the breath the breathing the in and out is underneath everything that is going on in our lives, I think that's a comforting thing. How close our God is to us. How close we are to our God. To know that even where we struggle to find words or are beyond words, God's very self is there, present, within us, moving us, living in us, knowing what is going on and working for good. Right in there, in, the, in all of the chaotic, scary times that we envision and that we experience, God is there, moving in us, moving with us, and never leaving us. As we think about the fact that God never leaves us, we're drawn to that final sentence in the passage from Romans the one that so many families request to have read when we're celebrating the life of a loved one who has passed. For I am convinced, says St. Paul, that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing will be able to separate us from the breath of God that is within us. Now we know that Paul's own life was difficult. It was full of challenge and disappointment and arrest and finally his own death in the name of Christ. And still, still with all of that, he comes up with this amazing image, a God that breathes with us, a God that is with us during the ups and downs of our lives and our world, as inseparable from us as what goes on in our very being, the very breath of life that God himself has given us. So next time you take a deep breath, and you might want to do that right now. Just breathe in and breathe out. Remember, remember St. Paul's words. 
Remember this image of God, the Spirit of God, as the very breath of life within us. Remember that it is God's breath breathing in you and through you, in and out, bringing hope, bringing healing, bringing life, and bringing goodness. Remember that God is as inseparably with you as that very breath, whether you are aware of its presence or not. And not only in you, but around you, and in the world, and in everything. Sighing with all of creation, as St. Paul says elsewhere in one of his letters, with sighs too deep for words, the breath connected and working with all that is, and it goes on forever. It may be not noticed. Our breathing frequently is. We just do it. It's just there. It's an involuntary reflex. And even in that, even when we don't think about it, God is present with us. At that same time, equally inseparable from God and from us and from, war and from the world, we are part of the Spirit. We are part of creation. We are part of all that is living and breathing and alive in the world. And even in places where the suffering is beyond our words to describe and beyond our capacity to intervene and change, God is there and we step up and do what we can. For that spirit, that breath, that ruach, as it is with us, as it is inseparable from us, calls us to work, calls us to work with God, trusting that whatever we can be and do as the body of Christ will be taken up in the bigger picture of God's own breath as he loves us and all of creation. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which you will find on page 358 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe, believe in, in one, one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, earth of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe, believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of the present moment, God who in Jesus stills the storm and soothes the frantic heart, bring hope and courage to all who wait or work in uncertainty. Bring hope that you will make us the equal of whatever lies ahead. Bring us courage to endure what cannot be avoided, for your will is health and wholeness. You are God, and we need you. Loving God, we thank you for being with us. Lord Christ, we thank you for being with us. Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us. 
We thank you for all the blessings we still encounter in our lives, for the love and care of family, neighbors, and friends. We remember those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Mishko and Kevin, and those who celebrate anniversaries. We pray for all who are victims in this time of pandemic, the unemployed, the homeless, the hungry, the sick, those who have died, and those who will die in the days to come. Give us a passion for your truth and the strength to work for your justice for every member of your human family. Bring us in your own time into your perfect light. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. The confession of sin may be found on page 360 of the prayer book. Most, Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Sisters and brothers, this time of pandemic goes on and on, it seems, and we continue to celebrate and grow our ministries here at St. Andrew's Church because of the support that we continue to receive from so many people. Your wardens and Vestry and I are continuing to be in touch with, with you, and we know that there is hardship out there, that things are difficult. And so if you are not able to continue to support St. Andrews financially, we absolutely understand. We just ask, tell us how we can help. Be in touch. We're praying for you. We will make this through together. For those of you who have been able to continue to support St. Andrews, we give you so many thanks. Because what your gifts do is continue to make this a place where we not only have a home for people who know it and love it, but things happen in the neighborhood and people are brought to the incredible power of God's love because we are here because of you. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer before you a sacrifice of praise and prayer which is holy and pleasing in your sight. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we, we remember, remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with blessed Andrew and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray together. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we, we believe, believe that you are truly present in the sacrament. The sacrament. We, we love you above all things, and we desire to possess you within our souls. Since we are unable to at this moment to receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into our hearts. We embrace you as being already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Our prayer after communion is found on page 366 of the prayer book. Almighty, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son, and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Creator, the Redeemer, the Sustainer of our lives, be upon you this day and remain with you unto ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.